السلام عليكم مساء الخير so I am Shahnaz Sharfi Priki I am the chair of uh, ILE Eastern Mediterranean Region Board and I am today the moderator of the first part of the webinar and uh, before before to begin, I would like to express my great pleasure and honor today that today we inaugurate the first meeting of the Epilepsy Educational Webinar in the English program organized by the International League Against Epilepsy and with the Eastern Mediterranean region. These webinars program aim to train young people in epileptology and be aware of the latest advances in epileptology. Also gather specialists from our region for positive interaction and the establishment of collaborative uh, net, uh, networks. Preparing the next, our next uh, regional Congress scheduled for 2021 in Jordan which will be hybrid in order to allow people who cannot uh, travel to attend uh, these uh, uh, very important and uh, uh, we need to uh, to encourage our uh, regional uh, congress we hope that uh, the program set up by the ILE Eastern Mediterranean Region Board will meet your expectation and uh, we will be happy to receive your proposal for the next series which will begin in March 2021 so without uh, further uh, Ad, I have the great pleasure to present to you the, our first speaker in this uh, webinar. So, good evening, everybody. I'm going to start the video in a second. So, our next uh, speaker is Dr. Mashail Khatib. Dr. Mashail is an assistant professor at Al Faisal University. She is a consultant in epilepsy and EEG and in neurocritical care. She's the director of the Comprehensive Epilepsy Program and director of uh, Epilepsy and EEG Fellowship Program at King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center in uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Dr. Mashal is gonna to talk to us about the uh, normal EEG and normal variants. Dr. Mashal. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening. It is my pleasure to be a speaker today. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the organizing committee for organizing this meeting. Today, I will talk about uh, benign variants and benign epileptiform variant. Our learning objectives to understand the importance of identifying benign variant, understanding broad categories of benign variants and epileptiform uh, benign uh, variant and age predisposition and prevalence of this variants. As you know, EEG is a valuable tool to assess an accurate diagnosis of seizure disorders and epilepsy. So important to know the um, accuracy and interpretation of EEG. So the precise interpretation of EEG requires ability to recognize if this pattern are benign in nature, but may be misinterpreted as uh, indicative of seizure tendency, and that will end with different approach or different treatment plan. We'll summarize today benign variants encountered in EEG, including uh, benign variants with different uh, rhythmic changes or benign variant with epileptiform morphology. Although most of these variants are relatively uncommon, and it is uh, imperative that the clinical neurophysiologists identify them as a benign variants. As you know, our brain cells communicate uh, via electrical impulses and active all the time, even when we are asleep. This activity shows up as a wave line in EEG recording. So uh, our brain is made of billions of brain cells called neurons, which are 
use electricity to communicate with each other. Combination of this million or billions of neurons sending signal at once and to produce amount of electrical activity in the brain, which can be detected by using EEG measuring this electricity over areas of scalp. The combination of this electrical activities of uh, the brain is commonly called brain waves uh, or brain waves patterns because this cyclic and wavy like in nature. So brain waves, which is discovery, uh, with the discovery of this brain waves came the discovery that this electrical activity uh, in the brain will change depend on the person what he's doing. For instance, brain waves of a sleeping person are vastly different than brain waves of someone uh, during sleep. What about epileptic form discharges or abnormal uh, EEG findings? It's called spikes, which is sharp, transient, easy to distinguish from background activity, having a duration less than 70 milliseconds, and something else called sharp waves and the slow waves. The difference between sharp waves and the slow waves that sharp waves have duration of more than 70 milliseconds and less than 200 milliseconds and slow waves duration of less than of more than 200 milliseconds so looking to this sharply contoured activity or epileptic form discharges important to know that this is really distinguished from background and disturbance the background activity and really that obvious when you look to the EEG and you, you will recognize it as abnormal and something out of the background. What about benign uh, EEG variants? It is exactly similar to this picture. It's normal EEG variant that refers to wave, rare or unusual, but not generally abnormal. They may be unusual in shape or distribution, and these variants include uh, waveform and pattern that are rarely seen or unusual, but again, it is known to be generally benign and no need for any treatment. These variants can be seen in normal individuals or in patients with various complaints, but uh, has not been proven that this directly to indicate or increase the risk of seizure or epileptogenic risk. So important when you see this activity to make sure that this is not standing out and is not really disturbing background activity. Benign variants or benign patterns can be divided into two groups, either change in rhythmic patterns or patterns with epileptiform morphology. Starting with benign variants with rhythmic patterns, these are or there are six main types of rhythmic variants EEG patterns. Uh, alpha variants, mu rhythm, rhythmic temporal theta, burst of drowsiness or psychomotor variants, subclinical rhythmic electrographic theta discharges in adult or serida, and midline theta rhythms and frontal arousal uh, rhythm or fart. And this is exactly similar to these pictures. Uh, it is kind of uh, activities or patterns that all coming from one type and it is not standing out, just only the difference in rhythmic, but at the end, all is same. Second type, which is benign variants with epileptiform morphology. Uh, are kind of EEG with morphology of waves or rhythms that appears abnormal, suspicious, but are not pathological. Rather, they do not have any kind of uh, clinical guidance and different from normal EEG, and they do not predict the occurrence of epilepsy. And that is actually indicate, um, and that is actually similar to the benign uh, variant with a rhythmic, the only difference that the morphology is, it looks like a form. Like 14 and 6 hertz positive burst, small sharp spikes, 16 hertz uh, spikes and waves, or phantom spike and wave, wicked spike, breach rhythm, adding to that lambda posterior slow wave of youth and post. 
We'll see here diagnosis of EEG. It's really essential and most of the time it is normal up to 45%. And uh, benign ebliquiform variant that we're seeing in 13%. While um, abnormality or abnormal EEG that's seen in 40%. Starting with first type, which is um, a benign epileptic form with rhythmic change, which is called a mu rhythm. As you know, mu rhythm is observed in typical human EEG, usually defined as a frequency band between 8 and 13 hertz, arise from sensorimotor area change in mu power strength of mu frequency band have been used in recent years as a mean to study human mirror neuron system or MNS and less, less common in children and older patients and no reactivity to eye opening and the closure attenuate with contralateral extremities or just thought of movement. It can be unilateral or bilateral. Here is good example for mu rhythm. You will see that in centro um, central head region at C3, and it is a bilateral here. Uh, it looks like synchronous, little bit asymmetric, and there is clear no reactivity to eye opening and closure when you look here. Another example of mu rhythm, it looks like comp or archiform rhythm, and that is clearly seen at C3, which is looks like here asymmetric and asynchronous. Another example of mu rhythm, again seen, and it is um, uh, mainly at C4, asynchronous and unilateral. Another example of benign variant, which is rhythmic mid-temporal theta discharges or RMTD, common normal variant finding. Uh, often mistaking for pathological activity during wakefulness, um, uh, during drowsiness, um, which is RMTD. This activity was previously known as psychomotor variants because of similarity of this phenomena to focal rhythmic activity of seizure discharge, uh, mainly seen at mid temporal region, a frequency between four to six, seven hertz. Uh, sometimes it comes in Paris up to 10 seconds seen mainly during the sleep and the stage one and two, rarely seen during wakefulness, it can be unilateral or bilateral, sometimes shifting from one temporal region to other. Importance to differentiate between RMTD and uh, temporal lobe epilepsy or seizure pattern, that lack of evolution pattern mainly on RMTD when you compare it to uh, seizure or temporal lobe epilepsy. This is a good example for RMTD, tend to become less prominent during um, uh, second stage and uh, first stage of sleep and increase it during drowsiness and disappear during light sleep or non-REM, which is the opposite of ebliptiform activity and uh, either it can be unilateral or bilateral, and here you will see it, it is unilateral only. No evolution pattern. And this is a good example of nine years old a boy with uh, temporal loop, uh, with frontal lobe epilepsy, and this RMTD is seen, um, and uh, seen mainly unilateral, no evolution pattern, and uh, that is actually seen in up to 2%. Another example of RMTD without evolution pattern. Uh, sometimes you will see it bi temporal. Um, here, a good example of bi temporal actually left to greater than right when you look here and um, notch appearance waveform that is mainly at temporal loop, uh, some of which are sharply. And it looks like uh, in some like a seizure pattern, but no evolution in morphology or amplitude. This rhythm was formally referred to psychomotor variants, and 
important to differentiate between it and uh, epilepsy from discharge uh, by its relatively monomorphic appearance, lack of clinical uh, and lack of uh, spatiotemporal evolution. Another example of benign um, variant, which is alpha variant, some distribution, distribution as a normal background rhythm, posterior quadrant, harmonic of normal alpha rhythm, it can be slow alpha variant or fast alpha variant, uh, slow like subharmonic with frequency between four to five hertz, and fast subharmonic with frequencies between 16 and uh, 10 hertz. Pattern is reactive, seen in relaxed awake state, and uh, alternate with normal pattern or alpha pattern. Here is a good example for slow alpha pattern. You'll see subharmonic with frequencies of 5 hertz, notched and seen in relaxed awake state, alternate with normal alpha. Um, this is the normal alpha background, and this is the slow alpha variant. Another good example of um, benign variant with pattern change is frontal arousal rhythm seen in children upon arousal, pairs last up to 20 seconds, frequency up to 20 hertz, um, waveform notched during, uh, due to uh, varying har harmonic or uh, activities resolve once full wakefulness achieved. This good example of boy, seven years, uh, you will see pairs of um, activities that uh, up to 20 seconds frequency up to 20 hertz and uh, waveform appearance notched and you will see that it's completely uh, disappear uh, during a full wakefulness. Another example, midline theta rhythm, focal rhythm over central head region, maximum at CZ, archiform appearance between five and seven hertz, pattern wakes and wanes present during wakefulness and drowsiness, focal rhythm over central head and archiform appearance, reactive including uh, with limp movement mainly. Relatively considered as a rare, a benign variant called also Seganic uh, rhythm, uh, confused with seizure activity, uh, especially in midline theta um, uh, activities or uh, midline uh, interactor ability from the charges. Previously thought to potential correlate with underlying uh, epilepsy. The rhythm appears to be another non-specific benign uh, rhythm of a drowsiness, prominent uh, activities of theta uh, uh, confined to the vertex and midline uh, during drowsiness, but never evolved to uh, seizure pattern and always no uh, evolution or change in uh, amplitude, morphology or frequency throughout uh, EEG recording. Another example. Here uh, of uh, 15 years old during wakefulness. And uh, again, you will see it lasted uh, several seconds and reactive also to eye opening and rhythmic and morphology. Here it looks like archiform, six hertz, largely confined to uh, FZ. Another example of Seganic rhythm. and uh, typical of six hertz frequency and central location. Last one of a uh, pattern of um, unknown significance and uh, considered uh, one of the uh, pattern change and normal variant without a clear significance and sometimes mistaking as seizure pattern or epileptic form activities. The subclinical rhythmic electrographic discharge of adults or cerida is really uncommon, uh, mainly seen in elderly or uh, people above 50. Wakefulness or sleep sometimes is lasted more than uh, one minute bilateral posterior maximum, 
a resemble EEG seizure pattern, abrupt onset and termination. Uh, may, maybe uh, that is the only way to distinguish between seizure and uh, serida. It's another benign variant, and that is again mistaking as a seizure. You will see sometimes serida has abrupt onset and abrupt offset, which may be uh, uh, helpful to distinguish between this activity from partial seizure that the offset is abrupt, which is not the usual of a seizure. Looking here to this um, example for 66 years old, a lady, uh, this pattern recurred multiple times in absence of any clinical signs and lasted up to 60 seconds. This pattern uh, mainly seen and good to see it on longitudinal montage. And here you will see the periodicity and periodic changes over posterior predominant uh, posterior uh, head region, and that is predominantly sharp contoured waveforms. It becomes the next page as red mech then resolving at later portion, uh, uh, mainly at here it is resolving and this. A uh, normal elderly adult was asymptomatic during the discharge and showed no sign of behavioral or response uh, alteration. And now disappear. Another example of um, normal variant of epilepsy for morphology, which is lambda wave, located on occipital region bilateral as positive waves, triangular in shape, like uh, the capital lambda, and generally uh, symmetric. It's mistaking as epileptiform uh, activities here is a good example of lambda at posterior head region. Another example here. And mainly seen with visual scanning. Another example here with eye blank artifacts that is clearly seen here uh, during wakefulness despite diffuse data frequency activities. Another example of a uh, benign variant with epilepsy for morphology is posterior slow wave of youth, interrupt alpha occipital posterior frequency range between 2.5 to 4.5 hertz, wakefulness with eye closed, disappear with eye opening and drowsiness, mainly seen in children. Important to know about it described by Erd and Gastot in 1959 as a transient sporadic delta wave that superimposed or fused with dominant alpha rhythm in occipital head region. Most commonly seen in children aged between 8 and uh, 14s, and here is a good example of 9-year-old uh, female, uh, but uncommon in children under age of 2, and mistaking for occipital spikes or slow waves. You will see that it interrupts alpha activities and at occipital mainly and disappear during drowsiness and eye opening. Another example of um, benign variant with uh, epilepsy form morphology is a small sharp spikes or treble S, benign epilepsy form transient of sleep, mainly seen during light sleep stage one and two, anterior to mid temporal regions, unilateral or bilateral, independent, and mainly seen in adult and adolescent. It is not disturbing background as other uh, normal variants, low amplitude, short duration, uh, important to know that should be less than 50 microvolt and less than 50 millisecond in duration. Here is a good example of a left temporal region with a treble S and you will see this widespread field of distribution at F7, T1, T3, low amplitude, less than 50, short duration, less than 50, not disturbing background, and uh, that is really a good example of a drowsiness and trouble S. 
Another example of uh, right temporal uh, triple S, low amplitude and short duration, temporal head region. Here also example of a 70, which is very rare to see it, but uh, that is uh, with this, I mean, uh, very um, uh, change and uh, low uh, frequency overall and amplitude, I mean, on EEG, that is seen in 72 year old. Again, good example of a triple S, not disturbing background, less than 15 duration and um, less than 50 microvolt. Another example of uh, benign also uh, uh, epileptiform morphology or benign variant, which is 14 and six positive spikes. It's 14 hertz more common in adult and six hertz more common in children. Mainly seen during wakefulness, prominent during first stage or light sleep, short runs lasting up to two seconds, posterior, mainly temporal, unilateral or bilateral, best recorded with a transfer or referential montage. Here is a good example of six hertz and that is seen in uh, children during wakefulness, uh, prominent in light uh, sleep, uh, duration as you see here, 0.5 uh, um, seconds, mainly at posterior head uh, region. Another example of 14 hertz, positive spikes, wakefulness during light sleep, posterior head, and it is mainly seen uh, unilateral here. Another example of 14 six positive uh, pairs. Next, uh, phantom spike and wave. It is six hertz wakefulness and stage one sleep. Disappears during deeper stage of sleep. So it is mainly seen at stage one, uh, mainly seen at anterior and posterior regions. Uh, it lasted up to two seconds, a small spike followed by slow wave, and mainly seen in adolescents and um, adults. It is a good example of a stage one sleep, and you will see that this will disappear uh, in deeper sleep. It is mainly seen here at anterior uh, head region, it lasted less than uh, one second as small uh, spikes with a frequency of six hertz. It looks like uh, in uh, appearance or morphology, epileptiform because it is small spike followed by a slow wave. However, it is benign and will disappear with deeper um, stages of sleep. Another example of a phantom spikes and wave with rhythmic, uh, you will see it here as five hertz wave preceded by low amplitude spikes. And that is before arousal in a 28 year old female. Another example, stage one sleep of a phantom spikes. Another example of uh, epileptiform morphology, a benign variant, which is wicked spikes, uh, occur both in during wake uh, state and light sleep. Frequency uh, six to eleven hertz, and usually uh, occur in short runs, uh, seen mainly in adult during uh, somnolence or drowsiness, mainly in temporal region, um, not followed by after going slow wave. Uh, rises out of an ongoing rhythm. Here is a good example of wickets, uh, mainly seen over left uh, temporal region, not sharp, but transient, arising out of ongoing rhythm, and monophasic archiform waveform appearance. Another example of wicket, uh, you will see lack of after going slow wave and lack of background disruption or disturbance. Another example of wicket. At um, right mid temporal. Again, no background disruption or disturbance. Another example of wicket. 
Here is not really a good example of wicket, but you will see how it is uh, at least here sometimes looks like um, uh, archiform in appearance. And that is mainly seen at F7 uh, in second three and four and longitudinal bipolar montage. Here is a good example, anterior to uh, mid temporal uh, wickets. Again, lack of um, after going a slow wave and no disruption of background activity. To recap, um, very important to know that um, benign variants may be relatively infrequent, but the implication of recognizing them on routine EEG cannot be over uh, emphasized. This implies that this EEG interpretation should be tempered with almost uh, without most uh, cautions and a second and possibly third opinions should be advisedly sought whenever there is a doubt of uh, such changes or discharge. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Dr. Amashal, for this elegant presentation. Uh, I would like to remind our uh, colleagues that your questions should be written in the Q&A part, and we are going to relay them to Dr. Amashal. Our first question is uh, from Dr. Hula Sharif. She's asking whether these normal variants are occurring once, or are they repeated during the recording? Thank you, Dr. Abdul Aziz. Um, it is actually uh, seen uh, sometimes in some cases once, and when you repeat EEG for same uh, patient, you will not see it sometimes. However, uh, it can be seen multiple times during a routine EEG or a 20, uh, 20 minutes uh, EEG recording. Uh, at the end, it is not significant and it, it is not indicator of any seizure tendency or uh, epileptogenic risk. And we have another question of uh, Dr. Ostwal uh, asking, what exactly is the background disruption when talking in relation to the normal variants? This is really a very good question. Uh, background disruption or disturbance that is uh, commonly seen with interictal epileptiform discharges or epileptiform discharges in general or during seizure pattern. So you will see change in backgrounds. For example, if background for that patient is nine to, or let us say 10 hertz, you will see significant change to that background. Maybe we will see it more slower and can reach five or Four hertz. So you will see most of the time clear slowing in background during intellectual ability form discharges, and you will not see it with normal variant. Thank you. And uh, our colleague, Dr. Raibel Jandil, is asking uh, about the wicked spikes. Are they only temporal? Are they only left side, or can they be from both sides? Uh, this is really very important and common questions. Uh, it is most of the time mid posterior temporal can be seen unilateral or bilateral. And uh, the normal variants, do patients have only a single variant per EEG or they can have multiple variants in the same EEG? Uh, it can be multiple variants and this is really seen commonly. The next question is regarding is that indicator of uh, seizure or epileptogenic risk. Uh, there was no clear answer, but uh, most of the time uh, there is no evidence, I can say, and there's no, not indicators, and this does not indicate any seizure tendency. And uh, Dr. Galina is asking, how consistent are these discharges in one patient? Uh, not necessary to be consistent, and uh, sometimes you will see it uh, in one uh, EEG recording and follow-up EEG, maybe you not see it at all. However, the only importance here, and there is some study that showed that indicates seizure and increase the risk of temporal lobe epilepsy, which is something not as benign variant, that is called teridum. I, I didn't uh, mention it or I didn't discuss it today, uh, but this is one of the uh, benign variant that can uh, indicate seizure tendency or temporal lobe epilepsy mainly. 
And I'm going to rephrase the next question. It says, how can we confirm that these are normal or abnormal uh, variants? Uh, it depends on the pattern itself. Uh, as I mentioned, also background disturbance. Uh, this is the only way, uh, morphology, and uh, if that's really uh, evolved or not. Uh, there's, this is the only way just to uh, observe the, that, that abnormality or that variance and to make sure that this is really the morphology and the pattern uh, didn't change and it is not uh, similar to epileptiform activities. And uh, for mu rhythm and uh, RMTDs and alpha variants, are they seen also in adults or just in children? Uh, mu and what? Uh, mid rhythmic delta, uh, delta activity. Uh, it can be seen in uh, adult and adolescents as well. And as I mentioned, uh, in mu, uh, that uh, most of the time seen in adolescents and uh, rarely seen in less than two uh, years of age. And are most of the normal variants uh, have uh, the negative phase refer reversal? Uh, no. Is there a clinical significance of continuously asymmetric benign variant in the absence of background asymmetry? No, no significance. Uh, are there any normal variants related to mood or psychological situation or event? Uh, no evidence. Okay, and how about breach rhythms? Breach rhythm, actually, uh, it is one of the um, benign variants that's with epileptiform morphology, and that's seen uh, mainly post-surgical and post-structural abnormality. And it is at all not an uh, indicator of any seizure tendency or epileptiform risk, but as I mentioned, it is mainly seen in uh, skull defects and post-surgical. And I'm going to give you our last question here, and I'll give you a, a minute to answer. It is uh, regarding the phantom spikes, uh, WAMs. Are they typically seen in seizures or just in uh, normal variants? So if you see WAM in males, do you consider them uh, epileptiform or increased tendencies to have seizures? Uh, this is very important questions. Uh, actually, uh, there was a study in the past regarding that. And uh, when you read it, you will find they mentioned that seizure tendency, when you see it, that increased the seizure tendency. However, uh, after that, a lot of uh, publications, they actually, they changed that uh, theory to this is not indicators at all. Uh, so there is some discrepancy. Uh, at the end, if that is really repeated and the pattern changed, we may consider it as uh, one of the interactal, but uh, overall and in general, it is not uh, one of the, uh, it is not uh, indicator or not increasing any risk of seizure tendency. Okay. Uh, do we have more time, Dr. Shahnaz, for more questions or? Yes, absolutely. No, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so, why do the RMTDs called psychomotor variants? It was called in the past psychomotor variant. Now, nowadays we are calling it still psychomotor variant, but uh, the a new terms is uh, mid-temporal and um, RMTD. But it was called in the past psychomotor variant. So now we are just changing the name, but it is similar uh, definition. And what is the source of these normal variants in general? Why are they not seen before the age of two? Uh, there is a lot of uh, studies regarding this uh, to answer these questions. Is it related to brain maturation? Is it related to just the origin of cerebral cortex, thalamus, and overall maturation? And this is why it's not seen below age of two. So it is, uh, there's no clear answer about it, but uh, you will see that most of the time, the only answer that's maybe scientific is uh, the brain maturation itself. It can answer these questions. Why it is once they reach two, you will see most of the variant. And before that, most of the time it is not there. 
And how does uh, sleep deprivation affect the physiological uh, variants? Uh, sleep deprivation is not uh, really affecting the, this normal variant, but that increased the yield and that increased the epileptiform discharges or interictal. But uh, as I know, it's never really uh, affect and, uh, the normal variant per se, but uh, it's completely different when we talk about interictal or uh, seizure pattern. <laughs> A question says, location of fast rhythm before sleep and how to differentiate it uh, from abnormal? Uh, location of fast rhythm? Yeah. Fast before alpha, sleep. you mean? So Perfect. fast alpha, it is seen in the posterior head region, as I mentioned, and you will see that it is alternate with the normal alpha, slow alpha and, and uh, fast alpha, it alternate with normal alpha, but uh, uh, how you differentiate between this and uh, what is the second part of his questions? Is the background change? Uh, from uh, abnormal. Because we have another question here, if we can go to that. It's, I think this is actually your talk, the whole talk. How to differentiate between epileptic discharge and normal variant of epileptic form uh, rhythm, of epileptic rhythm. <laughs> As you said, this is the whole lecture. <laughs> It depends on the two patterns I mentioned, it's the morphology and the, uh, the ability form, the rhythmic changes or just the ability form morphology change. And under each one, you will see different type of uh, variant. And a question here, uh, when you report your EEG with the normal variance, do you specifically mention all the normal variants you see on the EEG or you just report normal EEG? This is really very important and a repeated question. Yes, uh, I like to uh, describe it, uh, everything and all normal variants, just to make sure that no one will call uh, uh, that or uh, these changes in the future as abnormal. For example, wickets, if I didn't really report wickets that seen in that recording, maybe will be missed or interpret in the future as uh, temporal loop epilepsy or temporal interictal spikes. So always I prefer to mention each one just to make sure that uh, we know this is a normal variant as, and there is no epileptic form activity. And a question here says, mu rhythm is a rhythm. Why are we calling it a normal variant when it's a rhythm on its own? Uh, because you will see that uh, this is the pattern that uh, the, only the only difference between this pattern and the epileptic form is the change in rhythm. This is why, and that is seen mainly on the central head region. So we are not, con this is not considered as a uh, uh, epileptic form. And it is really the only, uh, the only difference between it and the other type of uh, variant is just the change in rhythm. And do the photic stimulation and hyperventilation have any influence on these normal variants, any specific normal variants? No. So with this, I think we conclude our questions related to the topic of normal variants. And I give the mic to Dr. Shahnaz. Thank you, Dr. Abdelaziz. Thank you, Dr. Masham. Thank you, Dr. Abdelaziz. And now I think we can move to the uh, first, second presentation. And uh, please, Hela, you can, uh, you can start uh, uh, how to read EG. Hello, everybody. It's my pleasure to be one of you today. I want to thank the organizers for the invitation. We are going to talk during this English session of webinar about how to read an EEG. It's a basic topic. The first question was, what's an EEG? An EEG is a scalp recording of brain activity resulting from the summation of excitatory and inhibitory synaptic potentials occurring across a neural membrane. We need for that scalp electrodes. These electrodes are placed on the skull according to the 1020 system using anatomical landmarks. 
The main idea of the 1020 system is to ensure equidistancy and symmetry between electrodes, as shown in the picture. In fact, this system is composed of 21 electrodes that explore the different regions of the brain, protocolar, frontal, temporal, central, radiator, and occipital. Left electrodes were designated with an odd number, whereas right electrodes with even number. The midline is marked with the letter G. New EEG device can lead you to place four more electrodes on the temporal vessel region as recommended by the International Federation of Clinical Neurophysiology. Our electrodes are placed. How can we interpret the signals recorded? These electrodes will be organized in a couple of electrodes itself organized in voltages. There is two types of voltages, bipolar and reference. In bipolar voltages, both electrodes are active, for example, FP1, F7. And what we record is, is a difference of potential, whereas in reference one, there is an active electrode in input and a neutral. A good voltage can be easily imagined and remembered. So, the longitudinal bipolar monitor explores the scan from the anterior to the posterior regions, and it is composed here of a left lateral line, a left parasitical line, a mid line, a right parasitical line, and finally a right lateral line. Transverse bipolar voltage explores the scalp from the left to the right or the right, right to the left. This voltage is shown and it has shown its usefulness to identify basal temporal discharges and proto orbital one due to the large voltage gradient in these areas. In referential voltage, the couple of electrodes is composed by an active input and a neutral electrode. The question was how to choose the neutral reference electrodes. There are some rules. First, the reference electrode must be removed from the underlying source. Since the source of localization is often not known, we recommend to use the average reference. In, uh, it means the average of all active scalp electrodes and to avoid irreference messages. Now let's move to the interpretation of the signal itself and let's begin with a background action. In fact, EEG signals are organized in rhythm and each rhythm is defined by its frequency, um, localization, amplitude and morphology reactivity, and reactivity. It can only be interpreted according to the behavioral context in which it has been recorded. So, the most important rhythm recorded is awake state, in awake state is alpha rhythm. It is defined by band frequency within 8 to 13 hertz. It is preeminent in posterior region when eyes are closed and is attenuated by eyes open. Beta rhythm are fast rhythm is recorded in uh, wakefulness with eye open and in alert school. It is widespread, preeminent in anterior regions. Delta and theta rhythm are slow activity, characterizing slow wave sleep. 
that the frequency is between 4 and 7 Hz, whereas delta activity is less than 4 Hz. Theta rating can also be recorded during awake EEG and REM state. So, how is organized the EEG during awakefulness? There is a posterior alpha rhythm. It is best displayed when eyes are closed and it is attenuated with eye opening or alerting generally. There is fast frequencies that predominate in frontal regions and uh, frequent eye movement and muscular uh, artifacts are recorded. So this slide shows you the EEG of a child with a dominant alpha posterior symmetric activity which contrasts with the beta anterior activity. In this slide, we see alpha posterior rhythm is dominant when the eyes were closed. There is here the eye movement in frontocolor electrodes. When the patient opens his eyes, alpha rhythm is attenuated and reactive. Beta rhythm becomes prominent. When the patient closes his eyes again, and you see here the eye movement artifact alpha posterior rhythm reappears. You have to pay attention. Blinking eye could be misinterpreted as a focal B frontopolar seizure. It is like making a delta rhythmic activity in frontopolar regions. During drowsiness, there is an attenuation of alpha rhythm and an anterior shift of this rhythm. We can also find vertex waves. The duration are uh, 200 milliseconds. They are these uh, basic sharp transitions with maximum negativity at the vertex. We can also find greater frontal prominent. Uh, of better rhythms and an increase of the frontal central theta activity. We can also recall posts. They are positive occipital sharp transients of sleep. The posts can also be recorded during the N2 stage. This slide shows you vertex waves. Uh, they are prominent in the uh, central regions during and and to stage during this stage there is no more posterior alpha rhythm there is an increase in the theta activity we can also find a delta activity but it is less than 20 percent of the epoch we also find special features that are represented by sleep spindles and key complexes. Sleep spindles are rhythmic central activity. Their frequency range between 12 and 15 hertz. It occurs in one second trend at uh, 5 to 15 seconds intervals. Sleep spindles are bilateral, symmetric, and synchronous after two years of age. Key complexes are B basic frontal slope waves. The duration is uh, up, uh, higher than uh, 500 milliseconds in sleep, bilateral, prominent, and uh, anteriorly. It can be associated to spindles. Slow wave sleep M3 
uh, during this stage, there is a preeminent delta activity. Uh, it may, you may uh, record uh, K complexes and sleep spindles during this stage, but there is no more vertex waves, neither posts. Uh, this uh, stage is rarely recorded in routine EEG studies. REM sleep is, only, uh, is also rarely uh, recorded during routine EEG. It is characterized by rapid eye movements, vertex so to waves. They are monomorphic, show chapit at the onset, and there is a lower amplitude mixed frequency alpha theta background. In this slide, I show you a uh, simple uh, slip spindles. Uh, they are in the front to center regions. Uh, you can also uh, see a greater frontal prominence of beta rhythm due to the benzyl benzodiazepine drug, and there is also uh, some sharp waves and uh, and spike on the temporal uh, left temporal region. Here are asynchronic slip spindles. There is a delay between the right spindles and the left spindles that is more than one second. Here I show you extreme spindles. They are long-lasting spindles. If you see, there is seven seconds of the spindles. And these extreme spindles can be uh, misinterpreted and considered as seizures. Here is a K uh, complex, and you see that it is a B phasic. Uh, it's B phasic, and it's prominent in the anterior region. Why do we have to evaluate the background activity? Because in some cases of motor delay encephalopathy, the EEG can be disorganized and could help to classify the patient, like in this slide, it's an EEG of an infant with West syndrome. And here the EEG is chaotic, it's uh, representing a fragmented ipsarrhythmia during non rem sleep. After the evaluation of background activity and the EEG organization, we have to look after anti ictal epileptical discharge. All the epileptic form activities stand out the background activity. For spike, its duration is between 20 and 70 milliseconds. When you describe a spike, you have to specify its localization. Is it generalized or focused? For that purpose, you have to find the phase reversal in bipolar voltage. Look at this uh, picture. You see here uh, there is a reversal phase. When you see these two channels, there is a common electrode which is C4. So this spike source is the right central region because the reversal phase is here on the common electrode between the two channels. How to focus? The first thing you have to do when you have the, um, something like this is to reduce sensitivity. Here, the sensitivity is uh, was 7 microvolt. When you reduce the sensitivity, you obtain this slide. Uh, now, it, it was 
50 microvolts of sensitivity. This montage is a bipolar one, so we have to find out the phase reversal, which is in F3, so in left frontal region. If you are um, reading the EEG with a referential montage, you have to find out the highest amplitude of the spike. So here you see that it's F3 has the highest amplitude and it's the source of uh, these spikes. But uh, all what stands out the background activity is not epileptiform. You see here there are beautiful spikes, but if you pay attention, these spikes occur when the nurse is um, crossing the bed of the child, and this activity is artificial. Other epileptiform activities, there is slow wave and sharp waves. The slow wave uh, uh, is defined by a duration that is more than 200 milliseconds, whereas sharp waves is defined by a duration between 20 and uh, between 70, excuse me, and 200 milliseconds. Here an example of right occipital sharp wings. The other epileptiform activities are spike wave, a spike followed by it is defined as a spike followed by a wave. They must have the same polarity and it is important to uh, precise the frequency. Is it 3 Hz, less than 3 Hz? Uh, uh, 3 hertz, less than 2.5 Hz or more than 3 Hz. Uh, there is also polyspikes and multiple spikes and they are defined as polyphasic competitive spikes, uh, spikes and polyspike wave which is defined as polyspike with wave with the same polarity. Here an example of frontocular spike waves with posterior diffusion. Here another example of multifocal spikes, spikes and sharp waves. Hello. Yes, I know. Bah, <laughs> Provoking procedures consist on hyperventilation and photic stimulation in routine EEG and in sleep EEG in children. Uh, in fact, dosinase can provoke discharges and seizures. We can also make a sleep deprived EEG. During hyperventilation, this procedure per is performed to provoke epileptic discharges, seizures, asymmetry or symmetric physiological slowing uh, and we see that in children. 
Photic stimulation is done to induce paroxysmal discharges that can be limited to the stimulus strain or self sustaining. It can also provoke seizures. It can induce also a driving response or no EEG change. You have to notice that if you have a seizure during a provoking procedure, you must stop it. This is an example of a driving response. As you see before, the photic stimulation train there is the posterior alpha activity. With that, give place to an activity at the same frequency of the photic stimulation train. This is an example of symmetric physiological slowing during hyperventilation in a child of six years old. Let's move now to ectal activity. Seizures should be like a wave with a build out and a let down. EEG can help us to distinguish between focal, generalized, and secondary bilateralized seizures. And when you use an EMG electrode, it is very helpful to analyze motor features. In fact, seizures on the EEG must differ from the background. It can be constituted by a sustained rhythmic pattern with a spatial and temporal synergic and with this the change in the electrical background various clinical features. Coupling EMG and EEG records can be very helpful to distinguish neuronic spasm, tonic spasm and tonic seizure. In fact, the EMG channel shows a very short activity during neuronic jerk and it is preceded by generalized or focal uh, spike wave or polyspike wave. For span, the EEG shows a slow wave complex with attenuation preceding a lozenge pattern in EMG channel. The contraction of and the EEG attenuation is longer during tonic spasm whereas the contraction is growing during tonic seizure and the EEG shows an attenuation followed by a fast activity. Here an example of spike wave and neuronic jerk. You see the spike wave is followed by an, a very short activity on the EMG. And you have to notice that, that there is other tricks that are not coupled with the spike and wave and they are non-epileptic. Here is, is an example of an epileptic spasm. Uh, you see here on the EEG there is a slow wave complex with attenuation uh, and on the EMG channel there on the delta wave, there's this lozenge pattern. Here it is an example of a typical absence of generalized 3 hertz spike waves, and you have to notice that the, the sensitivity has been reduced, and the duration of the seizure is 10 seconds. The beginning is average and and it's less upper. Here is an example of highlight neuclonium with absence, and you see that there is a left focal frontal one set of the spike and wings, and here also the sensitivity has been reduced. 
we uh, read the background activity, the, the Excel activity, the Intel Excel activity, and uh, the, uh, the provoking procedure. Now it is time to write our report. What will we write on it? In the report, you must describe the background activity and the SWIP EEG organization. You must also specify if your EEG record is symmetric or asymmetric. You have to describe the enter Excel activities uh, and to specify the topography as it's focal, multifocal, generalized. You have also to describe the effects of the provoking procedures and you have to describe the ictal electric activity and the concomitant clinical features. So, I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hella. And we are uh, really very sorry for the uh, sound problem. Uh, I think the presentation will be recorded and made uh, available on the ILE website in the Congress section, then uh, webinar. But uh, thank you for the attendee to, um, to be with us uh, despite this, uh, this problem. So we have uh, some question, uh, Dr. Hela. Mm -hmm. So our friend uh, Reib asked if uh, reading of EEG should be uh, with the full clinical picture uh, of the patient should be known. What it's, do you not think? Uh, it's not enough because it is important to, to have the time in which it, uh, it occurs because there is a synchrony be uh, between what happens uh, on the clinical features and on the uh, EEG recording. And it is important to have both in the same time uh, and simultaneously. So we need to have a clinical picture very, to know the clinical picture very well before to, to start to interpret uh, an EG. Yeah, sure. But yes, okay. <laughs> so the second the question is, uh, in a wake state, alpha rhythm diffuse all leads or at the posterior region, which is better? Uh, the alpha rhythm is on the posterior region when you are awake. It doesn't diffuse. It, uh, it can uh, diffuse by the uh, anterior uh, regions and thus is seen when you have uh, cortical atrophy. Okay. And also, though hyperventilation increased the focal, not generalized epileptiform anterectal, not the ictal discharge, in your opinion? Uh, it can help to 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 uh, to, uh, to up the, the sensibility of the EEG. That's why we do it in the in the adult. But in the if the, if uh, hyperventilation increases the focal, the focal epilepsy for interictal discharge. Uh, yeah, it can. Not so. It can. It can occur. And it is, uh, we, it can be occur, and it is, it is not, uh, it's contraindicated when you have an acute uh, stroke, for example. Okay. Uh, what is the difference between burst and paroxysm? Well, which is the difference between? Burst and paroxysm. Burst. Uh, a, uh, a burst is uh, a train of, uh, of uh, activity, uh, a few seconds of uh, a few seconds of uh, of empirical uh, paroxysm. A paroxysm is something that is uh, it stands up from the uh, background activity, and uh, paroxysmal activity can be. Uh, uh, can be epileptic form or not epileptic form. Okay. And uh, the next uh, question, uh, what's the meaning of evolution of the wave or discharge? Of? Uh, 
of the wave or discharge? Of the wave or dis uh, discharge? A wave, it's, uh, it's an activity in the, uh, in the EEG. So uh, all, uh, it's not sharp. And uh, this is a wave. And a discharge is a long, uh, is a, is a paroxysmal activity, a long paroxysmal activity. It's a long burst. And uh, the last uh, question is how long affected provocation test on age of patient? Hyperventilation produce response in EG up to age. Uh, sorry, I didn't, uh, Hyperventilation produce response in EEG up to age. At what age? We have. We can have. Uh, uh, we can have uh, uh, hyperventilation uh, response in EEG. When uh, in the children, if we have uh, response uh, after four four years, because we must do it. And it isn't, uh, it isn't uh, always simple to let the children with the greater uh, delay to do it. So it's difficult, but we can do, we can do it. And in the children we have an, uh, an, uh, a sewing, uh, that uh, symmetric sewing during uh, interventuation. But in the, um, uh, in the adult, it is, uh, it is, we didn't see that. It's not a symmetric uh, sewing. We have a slight sewing of the posterior lesions. Uh, if we have an epileptic uh, or uh, a lesion, we can have focal, uh, focal uh, sewing during interventuation. Okay, I think uh, we finish with the question. So uh, if uh, Abdel Adriz uh, uh, can, uh, can, yes, thank you, Abdel Aziz. And um, it is, uh, thank you very much for uh, Dr. Michelle and for Dr. Helezweli for this nice presentation and sorry for the sound problem, but we promise to have, uh, to record uh, this presentation and to, uh, uh, to make uh, it uh, available on the ILE uh, website. So uh, we hope to see many of you at our next webinar on the 8th of uh, September for French, uh, for a French session and 10th of, uh, for English session at the same time. Do you want to add uh, some announcement, Abdelaziz? No, um, I'm fine. I hope to see you all on our next and hopefully with better audio. Yes, <laughs> thank you very much. And I uh, hope to see you again. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice, uh, a nice uh, soirée. Bonne soirée in French and Sahara Taiba Abdel Arabiya. Shukran jazilan ala al-hudur wa nshufkum insha'Allah fil marrat al-qadima. Shukran. <laughs>